Hello and welcome to Ken Bostrom Ministries. We are so glad that you're with us today. I'm Dr. Ken Bostrom along with my beautiful wife, Mary. Glory to God. Mary, we have an outstanding program today. And once again, we're going to hear a testimony of a man that gave his life to Jesus. Amen. Amen. That man is Pastor Robert Dowdy Sr. Thank you, Ken. Praise God. Good to have you with us today. Thank you, sir. Dr. Pastor, uh, all kinds of reverend, all kinds of <laughs> chaplain. You're just loaded with all kinds of goodies. But Many hats. When yep. you've been around as long as he has, uh, praise God, God's going to promote you somewhere, somehow. Amen. Amen. That's right. You know, uh, you can view these programs uh, on kbntv.tv, which is Kingdom Broadcasting Network. You can watch them on Sunday, Tuesdays, and Fridays at 9 o'clock p.m. And uh, beyond that, you can go to YouTube, uh, and we have several programs on YouTube that you can watch. Amen. I want to encourage you to, uh, if you want some good teaching, some biblical teaching, I want you to go to mbostrom2.com. And my beautiful wife, Mary, is, is a teacher, anointed. I, I just love her teaching. Sure. I think she's very, very anointed and, and uh, does an outstanding job there. Amen. So praise God. But God's got something for you today, so stay tuned. And uh, I want to say this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Amen. son, that whoever would believe in him would not perish but would have everlasting life. If you don't have everlasting life today, today's your day because we're going to, Pastor Dowie's going to pray for you and uh, going to be a real blessing. Amen. Amen. So I'm excited. Yes. Amen. I'm good. excited. Pastor Dowdy was our, was our pastor for, and I believe he still is our pastor. Right, Mary? I, I he, he's got the biggest pastor heart that I've <laughs> yeah. ever seen. You know what? I, I, I think you're the only only pastor I've ever seen that does not hang up the phone until you say, "Well, let me pray for you." That's it. Yeah, and we always, we just appreciate always, it. I mean, it's just a, it's just a man of encouragement, mm -hmm. a man of encouragement, and we love Pastor Dowdy. He's pastored for many many years down there in Galveston at the Church of Living God. And I want to encourage you to, uh, if you're down in Galveston, yes, go out there to the Church of Living God. I'm telling you, you'll be blessed. Mm -hmm. To me, it's the fastest growing church in Galveston Island and Galveston County. Amen. And I'm telling you why. It's because they express the love of Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. And there's a young man, a grandson, and we'll talk about him. He's going to be on our third program coming up. And I want you to meet uh, Pastor Trey Dowdy, which is uh, your grandson. And he's, mm -hmm. he's pastoring the church there now, and you yeah. kind of set aside, but I know you're still preaching around wherever you get a chance, I am, right? I am. And, and we don't want to forget we got number four. We have Quattro. Oh, so he's wow. Like, he, he's growing up now, so he'll oh, be in the line. Oh, wow. So we made sure we got keep number that. four. <laughs> and I tell him on a regular basis when I hold him, I said, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, cinco. <laughs> Remind <laughs> Well, Pastor Dolly, uh, you know, uh, there's a time in our lives that we have to come yes. to know Jesus. Yes. I mean, you know, the, what happened back there in the garden a long time ago is separated man from God. That's and the correct. only way you're going to get yeah. back to God is to ask Jesus to come into your life, yeah. to confess Amen. him as Lord and yeah. believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and yep. you'll be saved. So share your testimony with us today, Pastor. Uh, thank you very much. It, it, it began, I was born in Tech City, Texas. Uh, I was born in the 30s, so I'm 80 years old now. And uh, I can remember, uh, you know, we used to play outside. Today they play on computers and, <laughs> and phones not. and that kind of stuff. But we used to play hide and go seek, all the different things. In the spring, you'd lay out in the clover and all of that. So when I was probably about seven, eight years old, uh, all of us have a story. Mm -hmm. I laid out in the clover, and the moon was shining that night real bright. It's spring night. And uh, I looked into heaven. And I just said to myself, if there's a God, I'd like to know him. Wow. Now, uh, I, my, my family wasn't heathen people, uh, but they wasn't church-going people. And uh, so consequently, church was something we did just, uh, you know, Easter and Christmas mm -hmm. and, and, mm -hmm. and events like that. And so uh, as my life began to evolve, when I was about 12 years old, they took me to church and uh, they decided I need to be baptized, water baptized. Well, it didn't wash away my sin. It just got me wet and I come up <laughs> and I continued with my lifestyle, you know, whatever it was at that particular time. And uh, I used to go to church and, and I have a, mysteri a mischievous uh, little personality about me. I'm all the time, you know, either ribbing people or getting ribbed <laughs> and, and I do different things. Uh, and I remember one day when I was 15 years old, this is very vivid to me. 
uh, Dad sent me, uh, he took me to church that day, and he said he'd come back and get me. And I said that church, I used to carry me a little straw, and I'd cut it off about that long. And I'd chew paper, and I'd sit <laughs> in the back of the church. And, um, of course, these ladies had these hats on in those days, and uh, all the different hairdos. Well, I, I made sure I hit all of them I could. <laughs> now, you say, Pastor Dowdy, that's not a good thing to do in the church. Well, you know, at least I was in church. And um, uh, I was convicted that day. Now, I was 15 years old. I was convicted, and I went down. And pastors, I want to say for you that's listening today, mm -hmm. when people come to you, one of the first things you need to do is to make sure that you talk to them about receiving Jesus Christ. Amen. I went down, and I don't accuse anybody of this, uh, but he missed the golden opportunity. He said, Bobby, he said, uh, uh, have you been baptized? I said, yes, sir. And uh, he said, you come for prayer. Well, you know, you don't know what you're coming for, really. Right. You, you just know there's a conviction. Yeah. There's a guilt in your life, but there comes that Holy Ghost conviction. And so he prayed for me, and I left out of that church. Well, on that particular day that I left out, uh, my life kind of just went south, as we'd call it. It went sour, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And I got myself involved in some things uh, today that I'm not proud of. But there again, God covered it with the blood. The blood is is absolutely yeah. a sure thing. Once your yeah. sins, even though as red and ugly as they are, uh, they can be covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. You know, we sing that song, what can wash away my sin? Nothing, Nothing. But, but the, the blood, blood of Jesus. Jesus. What can make me old again? Nothing, Nothing but the, but the blood of Jesus. Of Jesus. And once you begin to learn it as a Christian, mm -hmm. uh, then you know, even if you do miss it occasionally, uh, you have that covering and you have forgiveness. Forgiveness is a big thing. And so my life began and, and uh, my first wife, uh, I've, been, I've had the unfortunate thing in my life. I've buried two wives from cancer, but my first wife, the mother of my children, she came into my life shortly after that. Now, we have to remember, uh, back in those days, I was raised up through the 40s. I remember World War II. Uh, I lived through the Tech City Explosion, which was a, a big event for, in this country. Huge. It's the biggest natural disaster, yeah. not natural, but... Uh, uh, disaster the country's ever known, uh, much over 500 people. And, of course, we lived under martial law. A lot of things happened to us. And so I remember all those events that took place in my life pretty vividly. And uh, we, we, were, we had to grow up fast in those days. Mm -hmm. My parents grew up real fast. So working was just a part of our life. I went to work when I was 11 years old. And I know it make people faint today, but that's just how it was. <laughs> and uh, uh, mother told me one day when I was about 11, maybe 12, something like that, she said, you're, you're too old to be sitting around. So she mm -hmm. found me work. Uh, I did something to gain some money. Yeah. And remember, a nickel was a lot of money in those days. Mm -hmm. A quarter of you was rich. Yeah. And if you had a full bit piece, uh, you really had a lot of money. Okay. Now, what's those a, what's a bit that, piece? Yeah, you don't know what a full bit piece is? No. It's it 50 cents. Oh, okay. Two bits, four bits, six, six. bits. Okay. Eight bits. Uh, eight. A quarter, 50 cents, 75. You had to have a three quarters or a 50 cent piece okay. and a quarter. They took the 50 cent piece out. Okay. And uh, so uh, we all worked. It was from all of my family. I come from a family of five. So you went to work early. In other words, yeah, you were thrust too. into life mm -hmm. and you had to make it. In fact, my yeah. dad told me when I was about 14, he said, when you graduate, you're out. Mm -hmm. Me too. Mm -hmm. Now, I know it makes you faint out there today, but don't worry, I survived all of it. And uh, so uh, after, after I walked out, my life began to go a little south. I got, I got mixed up with some of the wrong people, as we all do, that don't follow Christ. I, 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 say, I, I didn't coin this saying, but it, I've heard it uh, from some of my preacher friends. Uh, sin will take you further than you want to go. It keeps you longer than you want to stay, and it costs you more than you want to pay. Yep. And so uh, my life kind of went south on me, and uh, I met my first wife when I was 15, and uh, she used to say this about me years later when we'd do marriage uh, seminars. Uh, she would tell the people that was there, she said, now, Bobby thought he knew everything when he was in his ten, teens, and he tried to prove everything he thought he knew when he got in his 20s. And then when he got into his 30s, he began to apologize for everything he thought he knew that he tried to prove and said he's pretty decent now. 
<laughs> so that's really the picture of Ben trying she to grow up. She had such wonderful sayings. Yeah, she did. She's a beautiful and lady. so uh, I met her, and uh, we we married. <coughs> I, uh, she was 20, and I was six, 17 when we married. And uh, I just knew I could make it. Uh, I, I've never... Now, I tell the congregation, listen, there is a fear factor in all of us. That's from the sin nature. But I never entered fail factor in my life. I just don't, I'm not going to fail. Victory is my cry. You remember that? Victory, yeah. victory, that's, that's our, our cry. That's our cry. B-I-C-T-O-R-Y. Are you in it? Yes, yes, yes. Victory, victory, that's our cry. And so even when I'd fail, I knew I could do it. I just knew I could do it. And I think it was the confidence because my mother told me uh, one day I got up on the top of the roof of the garage and I had a cape on. Mama fixed me up like Batman. <laughs> and uh, I thought I could fly. And I jumped and I hit the ground. I went in and I was crying. And uh, I said, Mama, I can't fly. And she looked at me and she said, uh, your name's not Kent. Kent. Your name There's is Bobby Robert Dowdy. Dowdy. Yeah. And you can you do, can do anything, anything you want you to do. Want. And so that was instilled into my life. Yeah. She'd tell me that all the time. Yeah. And then she'd fix me a, a peanut butter with apple butter in it. Oh, you Jesus. know, like I said, she'd yeah. make it stick it high. So when you got the bread together, you could, excuse me, <laughs> lick it around the side. <laughs> and uh, so Darcy and I, we, we started our life. We moved out immediately as soon as, uh, you know, I went to Navy boot camp. I joined the reserve. They had a program then. As soon as I got back, I had a little change in my pocket, and I rented me a place, and we got married, and we started a life. Now, I've never turned around to go back home. I just, I refuse to, once you start stuff, I refuse right. to quit, right. period. Right. Right. Yeah. Whether it was good or bad, I just went ahead and work, worked it out. And uh, we had our first child. This was uh, Tr Pastor Trey's father. His name is Robert. Uh, my, I'm senior. That was Robert Jr., and this Robert III, and we got Quattro now. And so... Uh, uh, when he was just, uh, he was born with a hernia. And remember now, the, the hospitals were quite different back then. Right. I call them a one-horse hospital, mm -hmm. little small things. Yeah. And yeah. the doctor said, we need to wait till he's at least six months to repair it, showed us how to work with him and, and, uh, and to help him. But on the 29th day, and your insurance didn't kick in to 30. So on the 29th day, we ended up uh, probably midnight, 1 o'clock at the hospital. Uh, and... Uh, he couldn't get the hernia back in place, and Robert was crying just uncontrollably. And uh, so they took him immediately from it, and the doctor told me, he said, now, he has about a 50-50 chance. It doesn't look good, I told Darcy and I. And so in, in setting in the waiting room, now, at that time of night, you don't have cell phones. You have pay phones. Mm -hmm. and I might not even have a quarter, but you don't want to bother people. Yeah. And so I didn't call in my family, and she didn't call any of hers. And we sat there, and, and as I sat there in that waiting room that night, I said to myself again, if there be a God, I need to know you. Mm -hmm. And I would sit there and just my little old simple thing, I, I just said, God, um, you know, please don't let him die. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> so the report after whatever time it took to do the search, they come out and they said, Mr. Dowdy, uh, or they called me Robert back there, Robert or Bobby said, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Bobby and Doris, uh, uh, he's going to make it. Praise and Lord. so we, we took him home. Remember, babies heal real fast. They, they, they mm -hmm. just heal up faster mm -hmm. than you do at 80. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. uh, we took him home right away. You know, maybe a day he stayed in the hospital. We took him home. Mm -hmm. I had the burden of the cost of all that. And, uh, you know, just keeping my family together, I was just so glad. And, and uh, uh, my dad was teetering on wanting to go to church some. He, he kind of messed up his life some. And um, so the pastor in Baptist churches, which I'm familiar with in, in my upbringing, uh, they always had visitation. If you visited the church on Sunday, you got visited on <laughs> Thursday. Yeah. Yes. And he come by to see my dad, but really God sent him there to see, see me. Yeah. And he, he invited me to church. And they was having a revival, and it was amazing. Now, the guy that I used to night. stand with and get out there and run the streets with, mischievous things, you know, whatever it was. He, was, he got saved for what I did. Charlie Wisdom, Dr. Charlie Wisdom, great Baptist missionary. Uh, he was preaching. 
And I said as far back I could have been in the street if, been, <laughs> if they had that pew. I just got as far back as I could. I took Robert Darcy, who was working as a telephone operator at night. I, I wrapped Robert up, took him to church. And, um, you know, he did a little small thing. They had a nursery. There's something they called a nursery, and I put him in there. And Charlie preached, and it convicted me. And he said, now, if you really want to be saved, just come down here tonight. Well, you know, it's a long distance from the very back of the church to the front. Oh, it's a long And distance. there's a lot of resistance, yeah. but you have to stand up. I yeah. believe we were standing, but my, I had a death grip on the back <laughs> of that pew. Yeah. Uh, but I let go, and I went down there, and he, he simply said this. Now, pastors, you need to listen. And people that love souls, yes. you need to remember, you need to ask them, yeah. do That's you it. want Jesus? That's it. Would you like to come into his heart? And I said, Charlie, yes. You know, him and I were... You know, we weren't bad people. We just sat bowling pins. We just did a lot of things back in those days. Uh, you never rolled a, those are kind you jump down in the pit and put the ball up there, but you never rolled the ball back because the drunks down there, they'd grab it and throw it while you are setting those pins up. So we, we learned tricks. We didn't want to get hurt. And we both set pins. We had a lot of fun in those days. Kids running the streets. And uh, so anyhow, I gave my heart to the Lord. And I went and picked up Rob, uh, uh, Robert, my son, to, go get his mother and uh, you know a lot of people gripe it's hard it's hard life is just hard period you just get over it i i look at it this way just get up and keep on going don't yeah, quit yeah. and uh, so i told her what happened to me now she was a, a she she was a what you call a very good person sure and, and oh, no. from the from the beginning she, she was uh, you know you can't say she was godly but she had godly act, mm -hmm. action and to, to marry me was, you know, beyond my thoughts sometimes why yeah. she put up with me. Uh, but anyhow, she married me. And from that, uh, from that revival, then we had another revival. And uh, she said, Bobby, let's feed, the, let's feed the pastor. Well, we didn't have money. So we fixed him. You know, people feed pastors. They fix some steak or good chicken. We didn't even have money for the chicken. <laughs> but Doris could fix a powder of pencil beans. Make so a rabbit chase a dog. Good <laughs> it was good. Cornbread. And cornbread did rise up that day. Oh, yeah. Come on. And then we fixed some greens, you know, good mustard greens. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> ooh, that's just good. Now, southern cooking's good. And uh, we didn't have beans, so we, we apologized. And that pastor, I believe he nearly killed himself eating those beans. <laughs> you know, down where we are, we added rice to it. Uh -huh. And it was good. And uh, she went to church that night. Because she lived such a godly life, it wasn't quite the change for her yeah. mm -hmm. but she saw the change in me yeah. mm -hmm. I was fanatically I became a Jesus person everybody I'd see I'd tell about Jesus yeah. Amen. and tell them what happened in my life yeah. and she gave her heart to the Lord well on that particular day we we covered it together that our children would be born again we went home mm -hmm. Robert uh, was just a baby we didn't have Sam at that time we went home and we laid him in his little crib, whatever it was, baby bed, I guess you call him. And uh, we prayed that God would save him. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and of course, uh, Sam come along a couple of years after Robert and we did the same thing. But the church was our entertainment. We, we didn't do other things. We went to church Sunday morning, Sunday yep. night, Wednesday night. Yep. We went to the events of the church. That was our activity. Yep. In other words, we centered our activity around uh, kind of like the old saying is, we drug our cho the children to church. We drugged them. <laughs> they were drug babies. And uh, so, it, you know, they just, and uh, they all got saved early yeah. in life. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you a funny story about Robert. He we was in, sitting in a revival, and uh, he got to cutting up. You know, we kept our kids in the church. Uh -huh. those days. We didn't put them in nursery. We held them and did all that. And, and Robert got to cutting up, and uh, he, he was probably uh, four or five years old at that time. He could talk fairly decent. And so, you know, I was, get, I was going to pick him up and I was going to take him outside to correct him. And I'm not going to tell you how we correct the kids in those days because you always get mad at me. But anyhow, we took him, and as I was walking out, I had him on my shoulder, and he said, pray for me. Yeah. <laughs> the preacher, he laughed, and the whole congregation laughed. Yeah. Well, you know, what can you do with a child when they say that? Yeah, that was, you can't was correct so them. So yeah. I just took him, played with him a little while, and went back in. Uh, but my life has been centered, uh, we would say this, Darcy and I would vote, <coughs> as far as me and my house, in, in yeah. Joshua, uh, I think it is uh, 24, 
15, he said, as far as, he said, I don't care what y'all going to do. Mm -hmm. You know, you get a, you got two types of Christians in the church. You got the sheep that just loves you, and then you got the goats, and the goats are going, but, but, Pastor God, but, but, Pastor God. And you got bruises to, to know yeah, about that. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure Joshua had plenty of bruises. But he said, as far as me and my house, we're going to serve That's the Lord. Right. That's right. Yeah. And so we just made it, uh, we incorporated church into everything we did. Everything we did. Mm -hmm. my, my, my family got mad at me. Uh, they didn't like it because I wouldn't go out and do the things I used to do. I used to could dance pretty good and with dancing comes drinking, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. And we had to separate ourselves to a degree from our yeah. family to, to serve choices. the Lord. But all of them got saved. Yeah. One night we heard uh, uh, the preacher preach on Acts 16 about the jailer and Paul, you know, yeah. he got thrown in jail and mm -hmm. uh, Philippi oh, yeah. and, and God delivered him. He didn't run off. And the guy <coughs> said, what must I do to be saved? He said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ yeah. and you'll be saved. Mm -hmm. And we had did, we'd done that by then. Mm -hmm. But your whole family. Yeah. Now, Darcy and I was raised, she was raised the children of nine. I was raised in five. And at, at, at that point, none of them really had come to know the Lord. And we went home that night. It was our way of doing things. We went home and prayed, knelt down, and we both said to ourselves and said it out loud to each other, our whole family is going to be saved. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a fact. Uh, I'm going to see it all. Because my daddy, I remember the first time I preached, daddy come and heard me. And he walked down, and he never told me he loved me. Uh, ever in my life. Mm -hmm. And he walked down, he said, Bobby, I love you. I said, well, you know, Daddy, I appreciate you telling me that, but we got to get you saved. Tears was in his eyes. So one by one, throughout all the incidents, Darcy's family mm -hmm. and my family, they came to know the Lord. Yeah. So salvation is real yes, and it takes real. place. Very real. Totally and I do want to say you. this in, in portion of my testimony is, how many of you have wept over souls? Yeah. How many of you have ever Amen. got out on your knees and said, God, just give me another one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Praise Everywhere I went, I witnessed it. Yeah. Now, I might do it a little different than my grandson will tell you about. I didn't have a Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't even a thought in anybody's mind. Yeah. But I had the field was wide in the harvest. So I, I witnessed on my job. I witnessed everywhere I went. Everywhere I went, mm -hmm. I talked about the Lord. Well, what better person? You know, of course, you had to talk about your jobs and all the work, but what better person to talk about? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Than the Lord. I remember you, you know, talking about on Sunday afternoon. You put a bandana on and you'd go to, go on the, and, uh, on the, the beach. beach. Yes. And talk to people. That, all, that's another one. Uh, when his father, Trey's father, was alive, he he was extremely turned on. And remember, iron sharpens iron. Yeah. And uh, we'd go down on Sunday afternoon during the big beach crowd in Galveston. It's on Seven Mile Road where the church is located. And you can still drive your car out on the beach that time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we'd go down there with tracks, and we'd <clears> go from <throat> car to car, and where they'd have their tents up or whatever. And we'd go, and i put on my bandana and bathing suit and a T-shirt. And we'd go down there, and we'd just go up there and give people tracks. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I went up to one guy. And I'll end with the story, and I, yeah. I gave him a track. Amen. And uh, he told me, you know, I'm going to tell you what to do with it. Well, you can only imagine what he wanted to tell me. <laughs> yeah. But he can never get the word there. Yeah, never get the And he kept out. the track, so only God knows, all right? You know, we want to give you knows. an opportunity. You've heard uh, a testimony of Pastor Robert Dowdy Sr. here, and uh, it's very touching. You know, even as a child at 12 years old or 14, 15 years old, uh, if you're 40 years old or if you're 60 years old, uh, you can come to Jesus. Amen. Jesus, he, he wants to come into your life. The Holy Spirit's just waiting just to come into your life. So I'm going to ask Pastor Dowdy just to give you an invitation to come to Jesus today. And remember, you know, you, maybe your dad never told you, I love you. But Jesus loves you. Jesus Amen. gave his life for you. He gave it all for you that you would have life. But not only life, but life abundantly. God wants you to have a good life. So Pastor Dowdy... Take okay. a minute here and just pray and give people Okay, very time. good. Uh, I, I would ask you to bow your head, but don't have to. I never saw where it said bow your head. So if you want to look at the TV, I'm going to pray with you that you'll receive Jesus. Amen. 
Praise now remember, it said that, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth and believe mm -hmm. in thine heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, mm -hmm. it says thou shalt be saved. So let's do mm -hmm. it together. Father, we thank you again. Mm -hmm. We thank you for the opportunity to pray mm -hmm. one with another. And Father, right now, mm -hmm. we believe that people will be born again. They'll come to know Jesus. Mm -hmm. We know that salvation is so simple, even a wayfaring fool shouldn't miss it. Many do. But Father, we're going to thank you and praise you for it. We're going to thank you, Father, today is the day of salvation. Amen. Now is the accepted time. And we're going to thank you, Father, that there will be those that will communicate back that they've Amen. given their heart to Jesus. Lord. Now we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we believe that you've given your life to the Lord. And uh, we want to hear from you. Let us know. Contact us at kbm7 at comcast.net. Let us know what the Lord has done in your life. Amen. 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 You know, we're, just, we're looking at a camera. We don't get to touch you or anything. But we want lot. We would love to hear from you. And and Pastor Dodd, how, how can they contact you? Is there a contact number we can reach Pastor well, at? Well, uh, church of the Living God. C O L G. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that'd be the and best. Your way church to... is located in uh, 3315 Seven Mile Road, Galveston. That's correct. Uh -huh. and, and mainly uh, in Galveston, you get to 61st Street. It's kind of the main one to bring you to the, yes, uh -huh. the beach area, to the seawall, and take a right and just go all the way down. 3.4 miles. Yeah, and you kind of curve off a little bit, and uh, you can see the church off there. So, And uh, I tell you what, it's an awesome church. And your grandson, Pastor Trey uh, Dowdy, is the pastor of that church. And right. it, and I mean, just, just blossoming. It's, to me, it's the, one of the fastest-growing churches. And the reason is they love you and they care for you. So Amen. if you're looking for a great church, I'm going to encourage you to go there. Uh, you will be blessed. I, I assure you, you will be blessed. Amen. And they're expanding their tents. They got a place now on the uh, east uh, east side. Do I say east side? Yeah, right. mm -hmm. And uh, which is a kind of a new new uh, new area. And we're going to talk more about that on the third program. And, uh, and it's going to be awesome. Pastor Dowdy, thank you. Thank you so much, you sir. Betcha, sir. You are blessed. I'm thank you. you. And we thank are you. blessed just to just know you. you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Known you since 1992. Yeah, in the family. 1992. So. You, God, you were our teacher yeah. in Bible school. Yeah, okay. that's, that's right. right. 1992, yep. we, yeah. Pastor Zadot yeah. is one of our teachers. So God bless you. We thank you for joining us today. And we love you. And Jesus is, is Lord. Lord. God Amen. bless you. Amen.